Welcome if you're new here. Let me show you. Right here, it is crazy. Last week I split this big hive, created this hive. Today I'm gonna to be checking to make sure that they've made some queen cells and that they still have plenty of worker bees left. When a bee first emerges from its cell, its job is to take care of baby bees and larvae that need to be fed and cared for. Then they also help clean out the cells and take debris out. One of their next job is to be an attendant to the queen or a guard of the hive. And then their very last job is to actually go out and forage and find nectar and pollen and bring in water as well. This hive right over here needs to be split too because when I checked on them last week, they were doing way better than I had expected. Last week I took some frames from my strong hive and put it in this hive so that they could create a whole new hive. I just had to make sure that they had some eggs that were less than three days old because they can continue to feed those eggs royal jelly and that is what makes the difference between a worker bee and a queen bee. Let's open them up and see how they're doing. really carefully take these frames out so I can see if there's any queen cups on them. I'm anxious to see if they found some good eggs that were worthy of turning into a queen cell. Oh, and they did. There's a big one right there and one right here that they are still working on capping. So right here, they've got a nice big queen cup that they are surrounding. In another seven or eight days, she should hatch, and then they'll feed her and fatten her up. She'll fly off on a few mating flights and come back ready to lay eggs, which is her main job in the hive. The queen bee's job is also to send out pheromones, letting the bees know that she's there, that all is well, and to keep working, keep bringing in nectar and pollen, and keep raising up baby bees. Let's see if they found any other. Oh yeah, this one's got two that I can see. Let me show you. Right there, there's two queen cells. Let me maybe blow on the bees. There's two of them right next to each other. And they kind of look like peanuts. That's how you can tell a queen cell. And because the queen bee is so much bigger than the other bees, a queen cell can't, a queen bee can't develop in a regular size honeycomb cell. These other capped cells around these queen cups are where just regular worker bees are raised and go through metamorphosis. I'll go ahead and close these bees up so they can keep their brood nice and warm. And then I'm actually gonna wait a few weeks to check on them again. It's best not to disturb a brand new queen, but hopefully when I look again, I'll find maybe a virgin queen or a queen that's ready to start laying. This is the big hive that I split last week. So I'm hoping they show no signs of swarming and that maybe, just maybe, they're starting to fill their honey super. So far, this honey super is just packed with pollen. Orange, green, yellow pollen on both sides of this frame and on all the other ones in the honey super. So there just must not be a honey flow or a nectar flow quite yet, but that's all right. Now to see if they have any ideas of swarming. This is so full. It looks like they have no room at all. It is crazy. Right there is a drone bee and you can tell a drone bee because they're a little bigger and thicker and longer and their eyes touch at the top of their head. And unfortunately, a drone bee's only job is to mate with the queen. So in late fall, the girls, his sisters kick all the drone bees out of the hive because they don't contribute to any of the work. They don't bring in any food or clean the hive or do any of the other jobs that a regular worker girl bee does. Here's my queen excluder and that just keeps the queen down in the bottom so that the honey super and all the honey stays nice and clean. Most of the bees up here at the top are worker bees and the bees know how to make the honeycomb just the right size depending on the type of bee they're trying to raise. Most honeycomb is shaped the same size for honey, pollen, and for female worker bees. But then the drone brood takes a little bit bigger size, and then the queen cups, the queen larva, that takes the largest size honeycomb. This one is pretty cool. Here there's white larva down inside these cells. 
and those are bees that haven't gone through their metamorphosis yet. They're shiny and white and they look a little bit like a tiny worm. These worker bees that have their heads tipped into the cells are feeding all the larvae down in there. So these are nurse bees. Right here you can see that cell with a hole in it and that is a possible swarm cell. And there were several on the bottom of here that I've smushed because I do not want them to leave. You can also see right here some older brood that's darker orange and that means that these are closer to hatching into adult female bees. And swarm cups are generally on the bottom of the frame. It's not always true, but it's definitely a good place to check this time of the year. So I'm gonna go back through and double check that I didn't miss any on the bottom of these other frames. There were a half a dozen swarm cells on here, which is quite a few, especially since I took away four of their frames that were covered in baby bees and pollen and nectar. But even giving them four empty frames last week doesn't seem to have helped quite enough. It is totally normal for bees to make queen-sized cells occasionally. It's almost like they just feel the need to practice. But when you find more than just two or three or four, then that's a cause for concern. I may need to take away a few more frames from these bees today. As a beekeeper, you'll learn to listen to the change in pitch that the bees make when they buzz, and that can help you know that you've gone a little too long without adding smoke. I also like to add smoke anytime that I'm taking off another box. It's just a good reminder to go ahead and add the smoke. And then here's another frame that's got a queen cell. This is a frame that shows a really good contrast between the drone brood at the top that's poking out and then regular female worker brood at the bottom. And then their queen cup. Let me see if I can find it. The bees can often cover the queen cup and make it hard to see, but there it is right there. As a beekeeper, I definitely have to be diligent and checking for queen cups because sometimes the bees will be covering them completely and then you can't see them because like on this frame that's full of all these drone brood cells that stick up so far, it could be easy to miss a cell just like that. But that one is a future queen cell. Right there, you can see a drone bee in comparison to his sisters around him. And now he's just a little bit bigger and his eyes are a lot bigger. I didn't find the queen in this hive or else I could have done something called an artificial swarm where I take her and put her in a new box and kind of make the bees think that they have swarmed and then the bees in this box would create a new queen. So instead, I'm just gonna give them some empty frames to give them some more space to encourage this queen and the bees that live here to stay. And here she is right here on this frame. Here you can see the queen bee at work and she has attendants that follow her around. They feed her and clean her and provide everything that she needs so that she never has to leave the hive again after she does her original few mating flights. Decided I'm actually gonna catch her and put her in this other box. That way these bees don't swarm. While I was filming, the queen actually tried to climb into the honey super because I tried to go somewhere that I could get some good light. So I picked her up in here. These are a couple of the frames that I chose to put to create a new hive. And so there'll be frames actually that the queen will have. And these are her daughters already anyway. Actually the box I'm gonna put her in, it has, it's kind of like a twin home where one entrance face is north and on the other side, the entrance face is south. So I'll take her and put her in one side. And then when I get my other hive out and split them, I'll put them in the other side to create a queen for themselves. Since this queen I have in the queen clip is from my westernmost hive, which is how I've been keeping track of them in my notebook, I'm gonna put her in the west side of this little twin home. So her entrance and exit is going to face north. Here's a frame that's just full of brood that these bees can raise up. And then I'm also gonna make sure that they have some brood that's really close to hatching so that they'll have some worker bees to continue on the work. The thing this queen needs next is lots of room to lay her eggs. So here's a frame that's totally empty and ready for her to lay in. 
I've actually never made a split like this before. I usually shake plenty of bees in here just because the worker bees will generally leave to go back to their original hive. But with the queen in here, I'm not exactly sure how that'll work. Here's my artificial swarm. I took the queen away from her original colony and put her in here. I gave them resources and some space and I'll even go ahead and put a second level on here so that this queen has lots of room since she's good and mature and laying a lot of eggs every day. Okay, before we close up this new hive, we need to let the queen go. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a shake. Now it'll be up to these bees to create a queen, but I don't think there's any way that they will swarm or they don't have a queen to go with them. And in my video last week, I explained and showed why I use these popsicle sticks this time of year. Now it's time to go get the second story of the hive box for this apartment hive here. There we go. Then I'll put a lid on them with the entrance facing north. There's their sugar water. This side is good to go. This hive is really hopping too once I opened them up. The air is just full of bees. The queen of my east facing hive. And it's good to find her because then I can make sure I don't put her in the split because for this hive, I'm actually planning to let her stay and have the bees in the apartment complex beehive over there make a new queen for themselves. I'm gonna go ahead and close up this west side hive. And then right here are the four frames that I'll put into that twin home beehive. These are all closed up. I think they're very glad because these worker bees are anxious to get into the hive with all this pollen they've got. This honey frame goes on the outside. Another honey frame on the opposite side. A frame full of mature brood will go in the center. And this empty frame for them to have space to store some extra things. We'll slide that right into here. And it'll take about eight days before these bees can cap a queen cell and 16 days total before any queens will emerge. Here's their pollen patty. Here's their sugar water. And then this top box simply covers the sugar water so that I can put the lid on, but then because this one is so tall, I'm actually gonna put another box to cover both of them and then put the lid on. This hive gets an attic as well. Foam is part of the lid and their sunshade. In summary, this hive right here has a queen it came out of my west side hive. This hive right here has got to make a queen. They've got four frames and the bees inside of here came out of my east side hive. This is my big west side hive and I took their queen away so they could make their own queen because they had a lot of swarm cups in here. This is the hive I made last week by splitting my big hive. This is the east side hive. They still have a queen, but I took away some frames so that they've got some more space so that they stick around. Thanks for joining me today as I expanded my bee yard.